So just before we get started here, I have re-recorded and rewritten the script several times, and it's always a little hard to follow, so I've made a graphic that you can open up in another window and look at. It'll help you kind of follow the points and ideas that I'm making. Uh, as always, enjoy the video. A couple of days ago, there was a post on r slash gaming talking about how this guy got an email from a company he'd never heard of. It was the alpha invite to a game called Burstfire. When he hovered over the download link, the link's address led to thewarz.com. Now, this is odd because these two separate games, Burstfire and The War Z, are developed by two separate companies, but are using the same website to host downloads. The title of the post was Nice Try Sergey, and I wasn't sure who he was talking about, so I looked into him. This man, whose name is entirely too Slavic for me to pronounce properly, was one of the big figureheads in Hammerpoint Interactive whenever the War Z controversy took off. He was found silencing criticism as well as berating paying customers, silly little butthurt dev stuff if you just kind of imagine if Phil Fish was a Russian. Actually, let's not imagine that, forget that ever happened, let's not ever think about that again. I went online and found some games he was accredited for, namely this giant bomb page which credits him with five games. Two of which are Big Rigs Over the Road Racing, notoriously one of the worst games to have ever been sold to the public. AVGN even did a video talking about just how terrible this game is. How do they let you do that? Even in the shittiest games I've ever played, even they stop you when you reach the gray wall of nothing. Even LJN games don't do this shit. This is the most unstable game I have ever played in my life. And would you believe that the copy I own is a more recent version of the game? Yeah, the version that most people have played is commonly found on the internet and is even less functional. In this version, one of the stages doesn't even work. If you try to pick this stage, it crashes the whole game. Not that it's any loss, it looks the same as any other stage. The truck you're racing against doesn't do anything different. It still sits there, waits for you to lap it and cross the finish line. Here we go. He's also credited with the War Z, otherwise known as Infestation Survivor Stories. This is another piece of trash that is publicized as the reason not to pre-order video games. This game was so bad when it came out, several websites and journalists put out PSAs against it because it was just that broken. This is still the War Z, I guess, and I'm probably gonna die now. Oh, great, I can't see because... Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. This game sucks. But I'm gonna skip all the boring stuff and cut to the chase. The company that made Big Rigs Over the Road Racing, along with a myriad of other trash, is Stellar Stone. Founded in 2000 and defunct six years later, Stellar Stone never really amounted to anything. Something to add, though, Sergei Titov is listed as their co-owner, as well as a key person, whatever that is. Odd, to be sure, but nothing damning. So a guy found that a dev house made a shit game, and then the company went under. There's no sin there. Jumping forward a bit, however, in 2011, a game called War Inc. Battlezone came out. As a quick side note, Giant Bomb credits Sergei with the 1997 MS-DOS game War Inc., I am about 100% sure that this is just a mix-up between similar titles. Warring Battlezone is pushed by several YouTubers to get people on it. It's a chalk standard shooter with a few inferior mechanics. It doesn't catch on. Hey, what's going on people? It's Guns Fryer from Next Gen Tactics, and I'm super excited to bring you this special promotional offer on a beta free-to-play game called War Inc. Battlezone. Now I know what some of you are thinking, believe me, I thought the same thing when it was thrown in our lap saying, hey, why don't you try this out? That, you know, free-to-play games are kind of Graphics are ho-hum, the gameplay is ho-hum, and I'm telling you right now that that is not the case with this game. I'm going to be showing you sort of bigger screens of the actual gameplay, and I'm going to show you features of this game. But this game is not like games like, say, Battlefield uh, Play for Free. If you've seen that, you know, again, you got to understand that for DICE, their main source of revenue, the where they make most of their money is through the retail versions of the game, the disc-based games, you know, like Battlefield 3 coming out. That's where their money is. So their, you know, their free games are kind of just sort of like a little a bone, a little bone that they throw at us, a little project. But this company in creating War Inc. Battlezone, this is their game. There, are, there aren't are these other games that they're using, uh, and this is just a supplement. They're wagering that this free-to-play game is is on par with all the other shooter games that you're going to actually spend money on it. 
And while it's free to play, it uses what's called microtransactions. So the base game is free, and then as you're playing it, and you've got enough bonus points, and by the way, uh, the link in the description gives you a special promotional boost, and I'll go over the details of that. Simply for signing up through us, you will get actually bonus content, which will enable, enable you basically to test a lot of the equipment. This game is developed by Online Warmongers and published by Arctos Entertainment. Now remember the name Arctos, they'll come up later. During the time of development, about two years before release, this now being 2009, Arctos bought a large stake in Online Warmongers. A year later, in 2010, Arctos led another round of investments totaling about $5 million. Sergey would now sit as president of Online Warmongers. A year after this, 2011, Arctos would sell a majority of its sales in Online Warmongers no less than a month after their only release. Now an important fact that I haven't told you yet is that Sergei Titov is the CEO of Arctos Entertainment. As in, he runs the entire company. He's listed as a general partner on several sites, but he is in fact registered as their CEO. So for a time, he was not only the CEO of his publishing company, but also the president of his developer. And no more than a month after the release of their first game, mind you, he sold all of his publishing company stocks in online warmongers. I was unable to find the year that Warmongers was founded, their site just redirects to the War Inc. site, but if patterns are to be believed, it's not unlikely that they were founded no more than a year before development on War Inc. started. But once again, let's jump forward a few years. It's 2012, and the War Z has just released, and everybody is angry. Developed and self-published by Hammerpoint Interactive, Sergey is on the forums defending the developer. So then the whole War Z controversy happens. Everyone hates Hammerpoint, and as if they hadn't done enough to piss everybody off, they rename the game Infestation Survivor Stories as well as change the name of the developer to OP Productions LLC, and then pedal it back on Steam to try and get a few gullible sales. This would be the only game that Hammerpoint Interactive slash OP Productions would ever make. As a quick side note, Hammerpoint was founded one year before their first release of the War Z, and Arctos acquired their stake a day after it landed on Steam. However, they announced the game earlier that year in tandem with Hammerpoint. By now you're starting to see the pattern. Arctos buys a front company, hypes up their game while blatantly copying the work of others, and then tries to hoodwink their consumers. When the game makes money, they abandon the IP along with the developer's name and continue on to their next project. Given I can't find an exact list of names or even a definitive headcount of employees, the only thing I have to go off of is that their CEO, Sergei Titov, has to have been calling the shots and overseeing these operations. And now, we wrap all of this back around to the game called Burstfire. It's being published by Free Rain Entertainment and developed by Nacho Games, a pair of companies that are so new that it's almost impossible to find information on them. Except for this, Free Rain Entertainment is owned by Arctos Entertainment, they're under their publishing branch. Nacho Games is so new that they don't even have a website. Whenever I search for Nacho Games, I get literal games about nachos. And although I can't confirm that Nacho Games is connected to Arctos in any way, it's apparent that Sergei Titov is going at it again. He's given his name another cover and is attempting to pull people into a pre-alpha game that will more than likely have a very convenient store in it. And to be honest, I'm not even saying that Burst Fire is going to be a terrible game. I have no idea. But what I am saying is that for years, the man behind it has been hiding behind shill dev houses to produce overhyped trash and bait and switch his consumers. Whether that be buying big rigs over the road racing, or purchasing items on the War Z, or just purchasing the War Z, Sergei Titov is a con man. If you ever hear about Arctos publishing or assisting with a game, if you ever hear that Titov might have taken a shit across the street from where a game might be developed, Avoid it like the plague until it's been proven to be worth your time, or at least avoid putting money down on it. Sergey is a slimy individual, and his companies are just extensions of himself. All my sources used to find this information will be in the description below. I'll also be in the comments if you have any questions or if there's any clarifications that need to be made. It's just generally a good place to check. And as a final note, I had a whole two, three paragraphs of script written about how Burst Fire had some good ideas and how it seemed like an homage to Rainbow Six and SWAT, some of my favorite shooters. However, more recently, I've become aware of the new Rainbow Six game coming out. I've seen the trailers, and Burst Fire is a complete and utter shitty ripoff of the new Rainbow Six game. That one shred of respect that I had for Sergei and his companies 
is now gone. I thought that they were just developers who had decent ideas. I mean, the War Z was going to be the competition to Day Z. There's too many E's there. That maybe could make Dean Hall not be such a cocksucker. But it's more than crystal clear to me now that they are nothing more than shills. They are the asylum of video games. Asylum being that company that you know from all the mockbusters you see in Hollywood. But luckily, we know he's full of shit, and we won't let another War Z happen. Because we know he's full of shit. Right, guys? Right? As always, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.